So if you've ever done any kind of epoxy work in the past, you're going to run into this problem. When you mix up epoxy, there's always going to be extra and you don't really want to throw it away because it's very expensive, but it's hard to figure out what to do with it. So I've come up with a few things and I want to show you what I do. When I first started using epoxy, um, once I decided I didn't want the epoxy to just dry in the container that I mixed it in, I started taking pop cans or you non-Midwesterners soda cans and I would break the top out and I would just pour the leftover epoxy into the can. Now I would prop this up somewhere in my shop and let it just drain out on its own and I still would get some residual epoxy left over in the container but it wasn't too bad. Now the point of pouring it into a can was I thought maybe someday I could take these type of things with random colors my son calls them color columns but uh, I thought maybe I would want to turn them on a lathe someday now my experience in lathe work is fairly limited I've done some little pens and a f I've tried to make a few small cups but I don't even have tools for my lathe right now so these things have been collecting and it's kind of getting to the point where I don't know if I'll even use them so I might as well just be throwing the epoxy away. So what I've come up with since then is to make coasters out of them. These two coasters uh, as an example are leftover scraps of wood so this would all be waste normally. On this one it's actually leftover bark from when I stripped the bark off of a live edge slab. This was a little bit of that and then a few other pieces of wood. What I do is I take my forms that I, were, I was using to make my serving trays, my epoxy and wood serving trays. If you've seen my past videos, I've made some that look like the beach and um, I decided to just make up one of those forms and fill that form with scrap wood. Uh, it, the one I did is actually uh, full of old, just bark residue from stripping it off of the live edge slabs. So I decided over time to dump the epoxy into the tray and as you can see it's random colors. I have some reddish colors over here. I have a lot of blue, a little bit of gold or tan and it's just colors I've used. The nice thing about this is all I have to do is take the container I mixed in, and turn it upside down, and just let it drip in here. Once it's done, I can just knock it off. It usually is stuck a little bit. You can see where it's been stuck in the past. And I can just knock it off. And usually the container is pretty much empty of all epoxy because it's been upside down, you know, for maybe 24 hours. <clears throat> so I've got this tray, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this whole entire tray into coasters. The great thing about this is the, the uh, bark would have been waste. The epoxy would have been waste. I can make something from what would have been junk and you could actually sell these. So it's going to be a little bit of random colors. Uh, some might not look as good as others, but we're going to see how it turns out. So Keep watching and I'll show you how it's done. So we're just going to start by taking this form apart. Now we're going to run this to the surface planter and get it down to about 3 eighths of an inch thick. So 
So I've planed the entire board. Uh, it has some low spots in it. And um, I think my planer knives need sharpened or replaced because I'm getting some marks uh, from the planer. So I'm gonna sand this thing out and then I'm gonna have a decision to make on how I wanna finish this. And I, we have there's two ways I could do it and we're gonna talk about it here when I'm done and I'll make a decision. So I've sanded this entire thing and I have a decision to make. How am I gonna finish this? Now, I've done it where I just finish sand it and put the normal finish I use on tables. Um, it works really good, looks really good. However, I've got, this is the first time I've tried doing this with the bark and the pouring it into the tray. So I didn't know what I was gonna encounter. And what I've encountered is there's some voids where epoxy didn't find its way in and I really don't want those unfilled and I have them on both sides there's a void up in here so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a light flood coat over the entire thing that will fill in the voids and it's just gonna be clear but it'll fill in the voids it'll also repair the epoxy kind of where it's been scratched from the sander or any kind of planer marks on it it'll repair that and make it look like nothing was ever done to it um, that's one nice thing about epoxy is uh, a clear coat can fix any kind of imperfections in the surface of the previous coat so i'm gonna do that and i think that's how we're gonna finish it but if you wanted to do this where you just put on a product, I use a product called Odie's Oil to finish my tables. Uh, you could put that on here and it would work just as well uh, if, if that's something you wanted to do. So we're gonna put a flood coat on here and see how it goes. Now when doing a flood coat with epoxy, one thing you're gonna need to do is you're gonna need to do something to prevent the drips from causing damage to the other side. So I'm just gonna mask this and what will happen is the drips will form but I can peel them right off uh, with the masking tape. Um, I've done this before on some tabletops, it works well. So we're gonna do it again right here. And this is actually the bottom side actually going to flood the other side first. Now keep in mind, this is scrap. Um, so if it floods over, forms some drips, really isn't that big of a deal because you could just trim them off when you go to cut it. Now I'm going to set these on uh, tape wrapped block reason being it won't get stuck to the block it also won't get stuck to the table and I want to check for level and this is way out of level one way to fix that is just use some shims it's still way out of level That's a lot better. That's not too bad. So we don't want it to puddle or run one way or another. We want it to try to set it right on top. So that's, it's important to make sure it's pretty close to level. So I, um, I did an estimate on how much epoxy I would need for this. And the way you do that is um, anytime you try to figure out volume for epoxy, you want to take the length times the width of whatever you're putting the epoxy in or on times the thickness. So in this case, it's not like I'm building it up in depth. Um, I just estimated a 16th of an inch thick layer. Might be a little bit too much. I'm not sure. 
But so anyways, in that case, uh, you take those three and you multiply them. Then you divide those that number by 61, and it tells you how many liters you have you need. Now this is going to be less than a liter. Um, it actually came out to about 250 milliliters, which is around eight fluid ounces. Um, I mixed up 300 just to be safe because of the crevices and I just wasn't sure what to expect here. Um, maybe I needed a little bit more in some of these holes. So that's what we did. So all I'm going to do now is I'm going to pour it on top. It's mixed up really well. Run it down in some of these holes that feel our problem and I'm not going to put it all on there yet I'm going to let it flow out a little bit now I, a lot of times I'll use this uh, it's like a bondo spreader just make sure it's clean and I'll spread it around with that One thing about epoxy is you got to kind of get every area that you want the epoxy to go wet with it. And what that does is it just allows it to flow a lot better from like a puddled area. It self levels a lot better if you get the area around it wet with epoxy. I'm already gonna can tell I have way too much here. So I basically just did this um, to use the wasted epoxy. And I can already tell I'm gonna waste some epoxy doing this. So at least the next the thing I know on the next coat is for on the other side, I don't need near as much epoxy as what I thought. Now there are a few larger crevices on the other side. This one, this side here does have a void right in this area right here along the edge that needs filled. So we'll lose a little bit of it there. But I got way too much. Tell you what though, this is looking really cool once it got wet with the epoxy. It looks really good. Um, that gone, I wish I had, I didn't have so much on here. Because I don't need this. I probably needed half the amount, maybe less than what I mixed. There is some holes here yet, but yeah, I didn't need even close to this as much. Wish I could flip it over. <laughs> So since I already know I mixed up too much, I figured I might as well show you how this is how I start this. So I just take my pieces of bark, fit them in. I want a little bit of space in between pieces. So, I don't, I don't fit them in tight. Because the space, at, that's where you get all your color from. So, um, I'm not overly worried about having little floater pieces in there. Because they'll just get, you can, they'll just get kind of, find their place in the whole design of it. I just piece them in. Now, if you can find thinner pieces, it's good. Uh, takes a little bit of less uh, planing if you have thinner pieces. But 
uh, it doesn't really matter that much. So I'm trying to fill most of the area so you get some variation, but I don't want to fill it tight. We're going to improvise a little bit. We're going to utilize this new waste that I created accidentally. Um, not sure how I screwed that up. I guess it's going to be a lot thinner than a sixteenth of an inch. Before I do anything with this epoxy, I want to make sure that this is leveling out okay. In order to help this self-level, I just get my heat gun out and I just blow pop the bubbles on the surface. There were some bubbles forming due to the epoxy reaching some air pockets in the porous bark. And so I just hit it with a heat gun. The heat gun also warms it up a little bit and makes it flow a little bit better, which helps the self-leveling process. You just have to be careful not to scorch it by holding it in the same spot too long. Just a brief heat over top is all you need. Okay, so I tend to do a lot of epoxy projects with blue, and I... Um, I'm going to use blue for this only because once I go to make these into coasters um, they will probably match whatever I make a little bit better so if I were to want to sell these maybe with a table I'm working on it would look a lot better than some random color that doesn't go with blue. So I have a Bora Bora Blue made by Black Diamond Pigments. I'm going to put a little bit of this in here. Stir it up. I like to get a little variety in color. Now if I were looking to get variety in color, in most cases I would mix them in separate containers. However, I just... So I've mixed this batch here up with uh, Bora Bora Blue from Black Diamond Pigments and um, I kind of want to get a couple different tones of blue here typically I would mix up two different batches if I were going to do a two tone in something since this is just scrap stuff and extra epoxy from my mistake previously uh, I'm just going to pour part of this in and I'm going to keep it down at this one end and just kind of randomly pour it over. And then I'm going to take a little bit of this Pacific Blue by Eye Candy Pigments and I'm just going to add a little bit to that just to get a little bit different color not measuring it I don't really care I don't have a set amount I'm gonna pour that in among among the uh, color I just did again this is just for some variety and so now since I made this mistake you get to see what I typically do when I make too much epoxy, I'll usually let the stick that I mix stir with drip. And I take the container that I mix it in and I just turn it upside down like that. And that will drip entirely out. And I'll have a, basically an empty container the next time to go use it, which is really nice because then it doesn't throw off your measurements. So long as you do it like this, it's actually usually not too hard to even peel out that inner layer once it hardens. If I were to turn this over and let it dry, normally you won't get it out. Eventually that bottom will start filling up and you'll get 
something like this where the bottom is solid. I have no clue how accurate it's going to measure. Uh, you got, I got cups like this, same type of thing. Now these are still usable because I could pour into here and stir something up after it's already been mixed, but to get an accurate measurement where we split the epoxy 50% one part, 50% the other is, is, is impossible to do with something like this now. So that is what we do. We're going to let this dry. I'll have to mix a little bit more up for the other side once this is dry and we'll be ready to start cutting them into individual coasters. So we let this dry and then just typically what I do is just kind of tap the side of it. It brings a little bark with it but it's not anything you can't get rid of pretty easily so and then it's it's a pretty thin layer in here it's pretty easy to bust out if you if you're careful and you take some time so same thing with a stick it just comes off like that and we have a start to a new tray full of um, of coasters so let's take a look at where we're at now It's got pretty good. There's a few low spots I can feel, but I don't know if it's really going to matter. Um, it can go on the bottom. So, we got that done. We're just going to peel the tape. And do the same thing on this side. So I've mixed up the next batch. I peeled the tape off the back side, got all the drips that formed uh, that came off with the tape, worked out pretty well. However, I did get a little bit of tape residue around the edge. So I already know I'm probably going to cut that off. So I decided that for this side, I'm not going to tape the, the back side. I got a nice surface back there. If it drips, I'm just going to cut it off. So uh, you can do that however you want. Uh, I'm not sure which one is better, to be honest, at this point. But um, this will work just as well. I'm not too worried about it. So I'm going to pour this on. I mixed up oh, about half of what I did the other day or yesterday. Um, probably still a little too much. But we'll see. So I'm going to do the same thing I did, and I'm just going to spread this out. And I'm just going to use this spreader. Now I have a little bit of a void right here that needs some epoxy. I'm going to spread it over everything. Again, you want the entire surface to have at least some epoxy. Uh, I feel like it, I don't know if it just breaks the surface tension or what. But it just, it flows so much better and self-levels so much better when you do that.
So that's really all there is to it. Uh, if you want to put a finish on after you cut it, you can. Uh, it, it doesn't matter, it's kind of up to you. Now here's how they turned out. Um, you can see the ones that I poured epoxy flood coat over the top have kind of a shininess to it. And the ones that I just put a more traditional finish on, they don't have that shininess. They have, you know, they um, are a little lower sheen. You can see the wood a lot better. Um, drop a comment down there in the comment section. Let me know which one you like better. Uh, I personally like the one with the finish on it. I don't love um, glossy wood, especially extremely glossy like you get with epoxy. That's why when I do uh, tables, I do not usually put epoxy over the wood. Uh, I like to put a tr more traditional finish on there. I think you get a lot more of the characteristics uh, get pulled out when you do that as opposed to just looking at a really shiny board that just kind of has a wet look to it. So that's my personal preference. Everyone's different, so I'm not right or wrong. It's just how I like to see it. Um, a few things I would change. Uh, I This is only the second time I've done this. I think from now on, after this tray that I started because of my mistake earlier in this video, um, I think I would like to make trays that are the set width of the um, of the coaster and the reason for that is that epoxy does not cut very nice on the table saw it tends to want to lift up it just it doesn't feel as safe as I'd like it to be you know I, I just feel like I'm a little bit less in control of the cut uh, you can tell when you're cutting through it when you actually hit the wood and bark pieces because it cuts a lot nicer so it cut great on the miter saw that wasn't an issue it was just I don't love cutting on the table saw so in the future, I would like to try to avoid that. So I recommend if you are doing this with your extra pieces, just build your forms however long you want, but make them the width of a coaster. Now I made these at three and three fourths wide. Um, I think it's a pretty good size. You can go four or whatever, but I would, I would recommend trying to stay away from the table saw if you can. It's just, it just doesn't cut as nice as it really should. Unless it's my table saw and it has a dull blade, which could be part of it, but I still, I, I just I would recommend making them the width you want them. Hey, thanks for watching. Hit that like and subscribe button so you get all my future content. Uh, if you want to know how I build the form, watch this video up here. I'll show you how I make it. And if you just want to watch some of my other videos, uh, I got a playlist right down here that will direct you towards some stuff that you might like. Uh, and we'll see you next time.